Hello and welcome to the Armenian News Network Grung. I'm Aspet Bedrosian and I'm here with Hovik Manucharyan. Before we begin the show, we'd like to request that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter and subscribe to and rate our podcast wherever you get your podcasts. All our Grung links are on our Linktree page. Click on that and find us everywhere on social media. All right, on with the show. This episode was recorded on Thursday, November 3rd, 2022. On October 30th, Renaissance Square in Stepanagir became an endless sea of people who asserted a clear message to the world. Any deal to assign Artsakh to Azerbaijan will be rejected. Also on that day, the Armenian parliamentary opposition announced a protest in support of Artsakh to be held in Yerevan on November 5th. In this Conversations on Grung episode, we'll talk with a member of Armenia's parliamentary opposition about this massive historic rally in Artsakh and the scheduled protest on November 5th in Yerevan. We'll also discuss recent developments and the opposition's views about competing plans from Russia and the West on facilitating a so-called peace treaty between Armenia and Azerbaijan. And we'll talk about these issues with Artur Khachatryan, who's an MP with the Hayastan Dashing, or Armenia Alliance faction in Armenian parliament, and a member of the ARF Dashnatsutun. In the past, he has held government posts, such as Deputy Minister of Territorial Administration and Development, Governor of Shirak, and Minister of Agriculture. Currently, Arthur is a professor of finance at the French University of Armenia and lectures on leadership at the Public Administration Academy of the Republic of Armenia. Uh, hello, welcome. Hello, hello, Arthur. Hello. Arthur, a day prior to the meeting in Sochi on October 30th, tens of thousands of people gathered in Stepanakis Renaissance Square. Were you there? Um, let me begin with that. And also, can you tell us what the objective of the rally was and was it achieved? No, I was not there because um, there was a delegation from European Parliament in Armenia. So I was basically um, with them. Uh, but our colleagues, two of our colleagues from Armenia faction, from ARF National Party, were in the uh, were in Stepanakir. They participated in the rally, um, so they themselves experienced what was going on in Stepanakir. Um, so you are absolutely right about uh, thirty-five to forty thousand people. So it's about one third of the total population of uh, Republic of Artsakh was on Renaissance Square to uh, protest against the. But to express their concern and to protest against the development concerning the final status of uh, our Czech Republic. Because it seems that the government of Armenia proclaimed to be the uh, guarantor of uh, security and safety of our Czech people. They said that uh, Armenia has lost its uh, possibility to continue being the guarantor of peace and stability and security for our Czech people. And they said the, that Artsakh has to negotiate itself with, uh, with the Republic of Azerbaijan about its own fate. So uh, in a more uh, human language, this basically means, um, you know, Armenia has washed its hands from Artsakh and says, Artsakh, you're going to deal with, uh, with uh, Azerbaijan. So Armenia has surrendered and betrayed Azerbaijan, uh, Artsakh. And these people are protesting against that because they understand that without Armenia's backing, uh, the chances that uh, a single Armenian will continue living in Artsakh one day after Azeri troops come to Stepanakert or other part of Artsakh are nil. So people understand uh, what's going on because Pashinya was feeding them with sweet lies, saying that everything will be okay, I'm protecting you, your, your rights, I'm uh, your proxy negotiator. We do everything for people of Artsakh, for the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh, but you might have noticed that starting from late summer, they are, they are using you know open text saying that uh, it's gone. And Pashinyan is blaming uh, everyone that was in office before him. And he was manipulating and uh, distorting the, the, the facts. Especially right. he refers to this uh, Almaty declaration, which is the formation of uh, CIS. And it says that by joining CIS, Armenia, uh, accepted the total integrity of Azerbaijan. In fact, I, that uh, Almata declaration was never used by Azerbaijan, uh, you know, over all these thirty years. But all of a sudden, it made it it made it into the declaration in both uh, Prague and Sochi. Yeah, you, you're absolutely right. Azerbaijan itself never used this uh, Almaty document first because you know when Armenia joined CIS, Armenia joined CIS in 1991. 
and the Armenian parliament ratified this agreement on the 18th of February of 92. Azerbaijan joined CIS in 1993. Uh, and, and second, uh, yeah, they are right, Azerbaijan has never used that. Even when the case of Kosovo was heard at the International Court of Justice, Azerbaijan was one of uh, about 25 countries that has submitted uh, its it written report on this case. And then they circulated another document uh, on, in on late December, I think it was 26th of December of 2008, where they justified um, the, the uh, Azeri jurisdiction over uh, Nagorno-Karabakh by the fact that when uh, the Soviet Union collapsed, uh, Artsakh was part of Soviet Union. And they used this uh, Udipositeris uh, case, international you know, law, Udipositeris, saying that since Azerbaijan was possessing Nagorno-Karabakh by the time that Soviet Union collapsed. It means today the, the, the case of, Azer- of Nagorno-Karabakh shall be uh, under the Azeri jurisdiction. And the regime, they use the word regime of, uh, of Nagorno-Karabakh are separatists. Okay, yeah, but since there was an advisory opinion on Kosovo, this means International Court of Justice has uh, turned down to all these uh, 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 arguments. And the uh, Minsk group of co chairs in February uh, 2009, you know, issued a very clear statement that no legalistic, uh, you know, no attempts to legalistically destruct the negotiation process are, are strictly condemned. And the, and the Madrid principles are the framework of uh, uh, according to which the, uh, the, the uh, conflict shall be settled. But you are right, so they never use that. And again, uh, when you when you refer to this advisory opinion, okay, the advisory opinion also referred to Charter of the United Nations that uh, are referred to in Sochi and in Prague documents. And the interpretation of International Court of Justice is that the, the principle of territorial integrity uh, is a matter of relations between two states. And it doesn't, and it, and it, okay, so Armenia shall respect the territorial integrity of the Iran, Georgia, and you know, France shall respect the territorial integrity of Germany. U.S. shall respect the territorial integrity of Mexico and Canada. But this doesn't mean that unilateral uh, uh, declaration of independence is in contradiction to international law, to applicable international law. So the, so the rule, the advisory opinion explicitly says unilateral declaration of independence doesn't contra- contradict to international law. So... Okay. You know, when they, and, and during all these 30 years of negotiations, maybe 31, starting from Zhelezna's process in September 91, there were three main principles. Uh, the territorial integrity, the uh, right for self-determination, and also no use of force. Now, right. uh, Pashinyan is the first and one and only leader of the Republic of Armenia who signed under two documents where there is no mentioning of uh, right for self-determination. And we'll cover those, uh, the, the documents later. But, uh, you know, as we know, um, especially uh, nowadays, might make, makes right and international law seems to matter less and less. But going back to the protests in, uh, or the rally in Stepanakir, one of the calls heard from Renaissance Square was uh, an appeal to the Russian Federation, to Vladimir Putin, to continue its endeavor to ensure the security of Artsakh Um How much hope is there, given the recent declaration of Sochi? Uh, do you believe um, that appeal will be heard? Well, this is a $1 billion question. We, we understand, everyone understands, if Russians didn't uh, enter Nagorno-Karabakh on the 9th of November, then on the 10th of November, the Azeri troops will be marching on the streets of Stepanakert. Because the Armenian authorities and, and uh, RA cards, Union Artsakh authorities, they basically emptied the Artsakh and the, the, you know, the, the troops were pulling back. So the Russians came into Artsakh and they stopped the war. And now they are, and now they are sort of guarantor of safety of Artsakh people. And the people of Artsakh understand, okay? And, and, and then Armenia pulled its troops out of Artsakh. And the Armenian troops were there since, nine, you know, it was a self defense army and then. Some Armenian troops were there to help the uh, defense army of Nagorno-Karabakh. I'm not disclosing any secret, okay, because Pashinyan's son was serving in Nagorno-Karabakh. And without any written document, I want to repeat that and stress that, 
without any document, without any written obligation to withdraw its forces from Nagorno-Karabakh, Nikol Pashinyan withdrew the forces from Artsakh. Okay, now there is an army of Azerbaijan and a small Slav defense army of Nagorno-Karabakh. And people understand that the, the, the Russian peacekeepers today are the only you know, guarantors. That is the that is the objective reality on the ground. And that's why they also they appeal to Russians not to move the troops. Okay. The analyst community uh, or you know, people who comment on this, there's a common belief that there are two competing plans for signing the so-called peace treaty between Armenia and Azerbaijan. The West's plan, which Pashinyan uh, said is also acceptable to him, involves recognition of sovereignty of Azerbaijan over Artsakh based on the UN Charter and uh, the 1991 Almaty Declaration, which we talked about. Uh, a week ago, another member of the Hayastan Dashin, Geram Anugyan, symbolically tore up a copy of what is commonly known as the Sullivan Plan, or basically the West plan in the Armenian National Assembly. Meanwhile, it's clear that Russia is offering its own version of the principles where Putin has given some hints that Russia would support mentioning sort of, uh, I, I believe the term was unique attributes of Armenians in Artsakh as part of the peace deal. Uh, however, based on the results of the latest Sochi trilateral meeting, even that was considered too controversial and Azerbaijan basically vetoed it. What is the position of the opposition on how Armenia should react to the Western and Russian proposals? Some accuse uh, the opposition or the, the parliamentary opposition of basically supporting the Russian version. Uh, is this like, you know, one version versus another? Or like, you know, could you articulate the position of the uh, parliamentary opposition on these uh, different plans that are out there? Well, there, you know, there are two opposition factions, so I can speak only for uh, Armenia faction. I cannot speak about the, the other faction. But we've said, and, and our party has stated clearly and unambiguously that any document that doesn't clearly mention the right of Artsakh people for to exercise the right for self-determination in full is not acceptable for us. Okay, it doesn't matter. It's been signed in Washington, in Paris, in Brussels, or in Moscow. Okay, so uh, we, we understand that now, you know, the, the main narrative is uh, uh, you are pro-Western or pro-Russian, but you've clearly mentioned, okay, that's not the name of the game. We clearly say any document that doesn't get, that doesn't say that the people of Warsaw have the right to decide on their own fate, they have the right, for full, the right of self-determination is not acceptable to us. Okay, and but I want to stress once again, okay, the, the issue of self-determination does not contradict to the issue of, of uh, territorial integrity. Okay, so the people of Artsakh mm -hmm. have the right to unilaterally declare their independence. It has nothing mm -hmm. to do with, with the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan. And there is no, and, and when, when you say, and when people say, or, or Pashinyan says, or Aliyev says, or international community says, Peace treaty between Armenia and Azerbaijan. I want to be very clear on this, okay? The problem, the conflict is between Artsakh, Republic of Artsakh and Azerbaijan, and Armenia is the guarantor of safety and security of Artsakh and the guarantor of the right of people of Artsakh for self-determination. So the first, the, the, the initial conflict is between Artsakh and Azerbaijan. The conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan is a derivative of the conflict between Artsakh and Azerbaijan. If the conflict between Azerbaijan and Artsakh is not resolved, the conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan cannot be resolved. So Pashinyan and his people say, okay, there shall be two parallel negotiations, Artsakh and Azerbaijan and Artsakh and, and Azerbaijan and Armenia. So if Azerbaijan doesn't want to negotiate with Artsakh, are we going to continue negotiating with Azerbaijan? If Azerbaijan, like, Four and a half year pass, then Azerbaijan vetoes the prolongation of mandate of Russian peacekeepers, and Azerbaijan moves forces towards uh, Artsakh, neighbor, uh, Artsakh borders. Is Armenia going to wash its hands from Artsakh? You know, the people of Artsakh are same Armenians, okay? It doesn't matter. It's an Armenian who is in Artsakh, Armenia of Shirak, Armenia right. of downtown Yerevan. It's unfathomable to me that people are. Uh, you know, and government policymakers are making these arguments. And this is crazy, okay? I want to be clear about that, okay? Uh, if we lose Artsakh, we lose Armenia. So this is a salami strategy, okay? Uh, Aliyev, you know, grabbed a big chunk of Artsakh, 
Now he wants another part of Artsakh, and then as a salami, okay, to take Armenia slice by slice. Okay, so uh, Armenia cannot be without Artsakh because Artsakh was a four post among guide of Armenia. If they take Artsakh, Armenia becomes unprotected. They attacked the Jermuk, they captured part of the Jermuk region and in and uh, in Sunik and in uh, Yarkonik in Sevan area after they occupied large parts of Artsakh. So when people were saying, okay, give Artsakh away to keep Armenia, they're absolutely wrong. And the, the, the this last two years show that. Armenia became mm -hmm. weaker after we lost 75% of Artsakh. And Azerbaijan, they do not have their intentions. Okay, They don't want peace of Artsakh only. They want Sunik. Okay, to have communication, direct communication, and to link the Turkish world from Bosphorus to Western China. Arthur, you mentioned the international community, and uh, I believe there is a delegation even from uh, the EU here today. But you know, in your discussions with uh, your counterparts in in EU or Western countries, mm -hmm. do you believe that uh, message about uh, self determination not being you know sort of contradictory to territorial integrity is being uh, accepted and is being sort of you know uh, perceived properly well uh basically if we talk to uh, pro armenian uh, or neutral uh, european um, you know europe uh, euro uh, members of european parliament and europeans they have different opinions of course so, but basically well some of them uh, they understand what the situation but they understand that uh, Azerbaijan is a um, supplier of fossil fuel to Europe, and uh, in, in, in the European Parliament there is a draft um, uh, resolution put forward by the uh, European Parliament co-rapporteur in Azerbaijan, and they stress that that Azerbaijan is a reliable partner in su to supply fuel to uh, um, to Europe. But of course they understand that okay, uh, why do you want Azerbaijan to be independent? And we clearly tell them, okay, that the situation in Artsakh is very different from situation, for instance, in uh, in Scotland, okay, because there is no existential threat to Scots if they continue in the UK, okay, because there is no, no there's no threat to to Scots, there is no threat to Corsicans, there is no threat to to Catalans, but if Artsakh is pushed under Azeri jurisdiction. On the next day, there won't be any single Armenian living there. Okay, like we have the case of Nahijavan, and we have a case of other parts of Azerbaijan. So there's no single Armenian living in Azerbaijan. Before 1988, more than half a million Armenians used to live there. Now there is no single Armenian. This means this 100 to 120,000 Armenians will be forced out of Nagorno-Karabakh immediately. The next day after Artsakh is pushed on the Azeri jurisdiction, and Aliyev himself, he says that Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh won't have any special status, won't receive any special treatment. They are just citizens of, of Azerbaijan. If they don't like that, they can leave our, they can leave our Azerbaijan. So we have to explain that to them. Plus, we say that when this framework of, uh, of, of uh, settlement of the conflict was established, there were at least five statements by presidents of Russia, France, and the United States in uh, in L'Aquila, in Italy, in Muskoka, in Canada, Los Cabos, Hamburg, and uh, there was another town in, in Northern Ireland, I don't remember, where they said that this conflict cannot be solved by force. So this means the change of the status quo by force is not cannot be constitute the solution of the problem unless the leaders of, uh, you know, the three superpowers or leaders of G7 or leaders of G20 change their minds. Plus, this conflict should be resolved based on uh, mutually acceptable concessions, based on these three uh, fundamental principles in Helsinki Final Act of Conference on Security and Cooperation of Europe of 1975, and six elements that were spelled out in L'Aquila Statement. This is like right. uh, interim status of Nagorno-Karabakh, withdrawal of Armenian forces from uh, regions surrounding Nagorno-Karabakh, then uh, the referendum of Nagorno-Karabakh, and the referendum should have been in the former uh, Nagorno-Karabakh autonomous region, 
Uh, before that, Azeri IDPs and refugees should be uh, should return home, but uh, at the same proportion that we that Artsakh had before this conflict, so eighty percent Armenian, twenty percent Azeris, and then should be a uh, referendum without any limitation. So Artsakh people will have their you know will, will be granted the right to go to the polling stations and to decide on their future. So that's yes. what I'm saying. Okay, we don't want anything else. We want. The, we want to stick toward the world, uh, you know, you, Russia, United States, and Europe, because French was France is Europe, you know, representing representing you. We we would tell them that, okay. Yeah. Well, some friends are friends understand that. Some, of course, understand, but because of you know geopolitics, they say yeah, but the situation on the ground has been changed. But you have to work with them, okay. You cannot say okay. Zelian Azov, because report is uh, says that Azerbaijan is. Uh, reliable partner. This means we should not work with Zelana. Just vice versa, we need to work with her. To, to... Zelana is a co is a rapporteur, as I mentioned. So to close the topic of the uh, Sochi uh, declaration and the, so the meetings in Sochi, uh, it became clear that the sides are far from agreeing on all issues. The statement that they came up with basically put an equal weight between Azerbaijan's maximalist agenda of security concerns versus humanitarian issues. The statement said that the demarcation and the limitation should be done based on the 1991 Alma Ata Declaration, as we said, but self determination was missing. And in fact, the word Gharabagh uh, was not even mentioned, even as a reference to a location, not a political entity. This doesn't sound to be like a gift from heaven, to be honest. Uh, how do you see the above statement differing from the, from the plans offered to us by Armenia's Western partners? And will the opposition tear up this plan as well in parliament? Well, if you uh, if you read all the state, if you look at all the statements by the Mies Group, by G seven, G twenty, uh, you know, if the statements do not send any clear message, this means that uh, they've discussed something that was not left, that you know, that was missed from the final statement. Obviously, uh, they discussed something. Then Pashinyan himself confessed that he failed to push his agenda. So himself, he confessed that he failed during these negotiations. Uh, of course, we are not happy with the with this document. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, even before this document was accepted or was uh, was you know signed, before the document in Prague was signed, we've said that any document that doesn't clearly guarantee or ensure the right of people of Artsakh for self determination, the right of self determination is not acceptable for us. And it's signed in Moscow, in Washington, in Beijing, in Melbourne, or in Zimbabwe. It doesn't make any difference. Some politicians uh, say that uh, it is in the best interest of Armenia not to sign anything right now and try very hard to do that. Others are saying that it will be worse for us if we delay this process, the status quo. What is uh, your opinion on that? No, signing the t signing any document where you are on your on the bottom when you are at your weakest position is the most stupid thing that you can do. Okay, because you are in the weakest position right now, and since you're in your weakest position, your opponent is pushing on you. So extending this is your in your, is in your best interest. Plus, we have to understand what's the text. Okay, what's the text? What's the text of this peace treaty? Okay, they say. Well, Armenia recognizes the sovereignty of Azerbaijan over Nagorno-Karabakh is not acceptable for us. If Armenia says, or the document says, we are returning back to these principles like right for self-determination, territorial integrity, and no use of force or threat of using force, that will be acceptable to us. Or at least if the document says, okay, uh, we do not discuss this, this today, or we do not decide on the status of arts of today. We will decide on the status of arts of sometime in near future. And the status of Nagorno-Karabakh will be decided based on the free expression of will of its people. Of course, that's a, that will be acceptable to us. Okay, okay. That's, that's another version of a delayed uh, referendum. But again, I say, okay, it should be agreed that the status shall be decided by referendum. The referendum will be either, either like in three years or when some preconditions are met, realistic preconditions are met, and there's no limitation on the question of that that will be uh, put on uh, on referendum. Because today, again, I want to reiterate again, like it doesn't matter where this document was originated, okay, in Moscow, in Washington, in Melbourne, or in uh, Mogadishu.
Okay, so following the protest in Stepanakert, the Armenian opposition has announced a demonstration in Yerevan on November 5. We, of course, uh, as Grung, have been covering the Armenian resistance movement in quite detail, and we will be there this time as well. But are you concerned about the apathy from people? Well, uh, the, the people, it's not an apathy. It's basically uh, the people are, are, are afraid of new war. Because uh, any time when we say, okay, Armenian rights shall be protected, Pashinyan starts talking about the new war and new uh, victims. And Pashinyan is using this very uh, ugly uh, strategy. I call it the syndrome of uh, aching tooth. Okay, he says your tooth is aching and you have to pull it. Until you pull your a, your your tooth, you will be suffering. So Karabakh, Artsakh is this aching tooth. You have to pull it so you can live uh, a happy life. And we say no. Uh, you know, if you lose Artsakh, that's Salami strategy. First, you will lose Artsakh, then you will lose Sunik, and then you will lose the shores of Sevan. And then Azaris will say, okay, like um, 30 years ago, Vaik was called Aziz Bekov. And Azaris used to, there was a big Azari minority in Vaik. So the Azaris have to return back. And the town shall be renamed uh, by Aziz Bekov again. No, we say it's not an aching tooth. It's part of your armor. It's part of your shield. Basically, uh, you cannot cut your left arm to save your right arm. Okay, it's not that game. And second, uh, I think that the, 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 the people are starting to understand that because this is funny now, but today in the press appeared the news that on the 5th of November, the government will be uh, will do, have a, a campaign of tree planting campaign and all civil servants and municipal servants, I mean, community servants, will be collected and taken out of Yerevan <laughs> to plant trees. You imagine like 5th of November planting tree in Shirak when the uh, soil yeah. is, already, <laughs> is already frozen. This means this government goes to any nasty tricks to have less people in town to participate in the rally. You know, this is so ugly. And of course, they will have lots of police and uh, all kind of, you know, pressure on, on opposition members, on the friends and family members of opposition. So this is how Armenian democracy works, okay? So if I, I were Miss Pelosi, I would pay special attention to that. On November 5, will the protesters be told to go home again and wait for further news? Or is the opposition as resolved as they you know, in, seem to be in their public statements about removing Pashinyan? No, this, this rally won't be for uh, changing of the government. This rally will be just a support. This will be solidarity with people of Artsakh. So 10,000 of people went protesting or rallying in Artsakh, and now the Armenians in Ar Armenia shall uh, go on the streets and say that, you know, the, our, our, our brothers in, and sisters in Artsakh are not alone. Even if the government wants to wash off her hands from you, we the people, we say no. We say no, we stand with Artsakh. So that's, the, that's a rally of solidarity with Artsakh. Uh, they won't, you know, the, it, it's not a rally to kick Pashinyan out of the office. But in that case, is the goal of the opposition still to remove Nikol Pashinyan, as you have stated previously? It's not the goal. The goal is to save Artsakh. Uh, the tool to save Artsakh is removing Pashinyan. Okay, it's, a, it's not a sufficient, but it's a necessary condition. They are, you know, meeting today. I, think, I believe they met in Brussels for the demarcation and delimitation. Hajiev and Grigorian are going to meet uh, in Washington D.C. I believe uh, soon. So, uh, aren't we sort of, you know, if if the issue is saving Artsakh, aren't we sort of losing time? And uh, you know, when when is the right time? Well, the right time was yesterday, but <laughs> but uh, limitation and demarcation have nothing to do with Artsakh. Okay, let us start the limitate the limiting and demarking the border between Azerbaijan and Armenia. Uh, the Nahijevan, okay, let's start then doing that, but doesn't mean that, uh, you know, the, the border passes, you know, uh, bypasses the hill from right or from left, doesn't, isn't equal to uh, to recognizing sovereignty of Azerbaijan over Nagorno Karabakh. But of course, uh, you know, the, the deeper we go into the process, the more problematic will be uh, to solve the issue for, uh, for Nagorno Karabakh. We understand that. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't say that, okay, well, you know, the moment they meet and they start the limitation process, this means the end of Artsakh. No. Pashinya wants to show that there is a, it's a lost case, but no, it's not a lost case.
So let me ask a question. I just wanted to know that if the opposition came to power, how would that shift the negotiations? What would be different about the way the, an opposition government would take on uh, Azerbaijan and the negotiations? Strategy, tactics, everything. There are powers in this region uh, whose red lines coincide with Armenia's red line. So one of the super one of the regional powers is Iran because Iran understands that uh, the first country, no, the second country, Armenia, will suffer from this corridor is Iran, mm-hmm. and uh, you know they will be surrounded by by pan Turkists, for instance. Okay, so in this case, uh, their national interest coincide with Armenia's national interest, and the right. second you can understand what Europe wants and what Russia wants. Because, and what the Americans want, because I'm sure that Americans themselves are not very happy with seeing uh, get a powerful Turkey. And Turkey, you know, they, many people think that Americans can influence Turkey easily, but you know, that's not the case. You know, the, uh, um, the, 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 the Americans' partners in, Tur- in Syria are Kurds, while uh, Turkey is cracking down on, on Kurds. You know, they didn't allow Americans to use the injured league base. So I think that Americans also are not very happy with uh, this uh, ultra-powerful Turkey, for instance. Plus, there is uh, anti-Turkey axis, okay? You remember, like, uh, France, Cyprus, Greece, Egypt, uh, Saudis, India. So I mean, yeah, she'll, be, she'll understand what's going on. But if you look at the people who are in power now, look at their background, it's no surprise that they have uh, screwed up everything. Under the current situations, like Kovic was saying, uh, Azerbaijan is operating with maximalist demands, right? They've won the war. They feel good about it. They don't want to make any compromises. This is normal for them right now. Um, if they, if all of the strategies were to fail and Azerbaijan were to attack, do we today have the armed forces to withstand uh, an attack like that? Given that the CSTO is not interested in helping us, Russia is busy. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't come. But are we able to put up a front on our borders and defend our borders? Okay, so let me ask you a question in response to your question. What are the, the other chances? Because we understand that uh, Azerbaijan, understanding its military prevalence over Armenia, will continue pressing on Armenia. Mm-hmm. So if we fight Azeris, we will have a chance. If we surrender and if we say that uh, the odds are not equal, then we will lose everything. And back in, in May to 1918, not too many people believed that we can stop Turks in Sardarabad, but we did. Not too many people believed that we can uh, liberate Shushi, but we did. Yeah. Thank you, Arthur. That was a very um, uh, appropriate place to close this conversation. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. The pleasure is mine, gentlemen. All right, that's our show today. As always, we really want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter and like our Facebook page. Go, go, go. We'll talk to you soon.